What's up guys and girls? My name is Jeremy and this is Fishing the Lone Star. Welcome back to another episode. Today I'm doing something that I probably should have done a little while ago but it's been about a year since I've purchased my Kabote and I thought A, it's time to kind of give you a review of hey now that I've had it for a year what are my thoughts and B, some upgrades that I've done that have made this boat or Kabote a lot more enjoyable. So let's do that but first as you can see it's still in the bag behind me. We've got to get it out get it inflated, get it all put together and set up, and then I'll walk you through what I believe have been some great and awesome upgrades that have made this boat a lot more enjoyable, or the Kaboat a lot more enjoyable. All right, let's get it blown up. Okay, now that we got the boat set up and everything in it, I wanna walk you through five things that I believe make this boat better that could potentially be changed in future versions of the Kaboat, but at least for now, these are five modifications that I've made or additions that I've made that make time on the water much more enjoyable, especially since I use this as a fishing boat. So, excuse the shoe rack in the corner. Let's talk about the five things that make this boat better. All right, number one, first and foremost, are the wheels. So, I've got a video that I'll link below that shows how I install the wheels. You can see how low they are hanging down below. I made a modification with some chains so that I can lift these wheels up out of the water while I'm in it so that they're not hanging below. I'll link a video, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll put the link below in the comment section where you can actually see that video of the wheel installation along with the chains that bring the wheels up out of the water. So number one, the launching wheels are a must. This boat is I believe about 90 pounds. So to tow it from wherever you've aired it up out to the boat ramp or wherever you're gonna launch it, these wheels are a must. Hands down, a must. I believe they're $75, $80, well worth the spend and a great little addition to this boat. Okay, number two, the motor. I think this troll motor is a great addition to this boat. As you can imagine, putting a hole in the bottom of the boat for a pedal drive, <laughs> like kayaks are these days, is impossible. So, instead of paddling the whole time or having the oar set up, which attach here, I definitely recommend the boat. I'm sorry, I recommend the troll motor. Now, this is a 10 pound in terms of weight trolling motor, so it only weighs 10 pounds with the 55 pound thrust. And what's cool, it's got a little lever here, a handle, which allows me to lower it at any point uh, that I wanted it to lower to. So we'll set it there. Now, with it lowered to there, you can see the troll motor hangs down below. When I want it to get out of the way, I can lift it back up. In terms of the handle, uh, I've got the handle here. Here's your different speeds. It does telescopic mount out and also has a battery control on the top or a reader that tells me 20, 50%, 100%. So pretty cool. Kind of release and tighten the lever here. I love this motor. I highly recommend it. And I think that you must have it on a boat like this or even an actual motor other than a trolling motor. So definitely thing you should add number two is a trolling motor. All right, number three, a new seat. Now this boat, as you'll see here, comes with this standard seat. Let me move the paddle out of the way. It comes with this standard seat to the aluminum bench. I prefer to sit on this cooler instead. Now, this cooler is 18 inches tall, and I believe 18 inches wide. That's the width of the boat. But look at the difference of how much higher it sits up compared to the standard bench. So what that means is when I'm sitting on top of this cooler, my knees are parallel to my waist instead of sitting down low. It also allows me higher advantage when I'm fishing in terms of casting and seeing, and gives me a little more maneuverability in terms of when I'm paddling. So I definitely recommend you finding a way to elevate yourself out of the boat and to sit a little bit higher in a seat like this one. So that's number three. Okay, number four is a extended paddle. Now this paddle I believe is 92 or 96 inches. You can see how wide it reaches over the boat. The boat itself I believe is 55 inches wide so you need a long paddle. Now it does come with the ability to attach oars here and there but as you can see in order to use those I am right in the way and sitting in those. So I really don't use the oars very much even if I put the bench back here and was rowing this way, like me facing, excuse me, facing backwards, but rowing this way, the, the, the oars still almost hit your knees. So 
If I was ever using this Kubot in a river, I might use the oars, but I still think the paddle's better. Uh, so again, get you a, uh, a long extended paddle. You'll do you wonders on the water. So that's number four. And number five, I believe is a little bit of a nice add. And that's a fish finder. So now which one did I add here? Okay, I've added the Lawrence Fish Hunter Pro. And as you can see, it's tethered to my boat. When it's all the way out, this tether, it extends down to the very back. So it's not gonna cross over, it's not gonna get in the way of the motor. It just sits back here in the back. Now with that, I'm just gonna sit up here for now. With that Fish Hunter Pro, I can attach it through an app to either an iPad or a phone, something like that. And I can still see temperature and depth, which is what I need in an occasional fish finder. Now that being said, it's just a straight sonar down. So unless a fish is right under me, I wouldn't actually be able to see it on the fish finder. So I'm really using it for water temp and in particular water depth is what I mainly use this for. But that is a great addition and solves the problem of having a depth finder uh, or a fish finder on a Kubota. Because again, as you can see, it's kind of hard to install rails on something like this. So those are the five. Let's transition now and talk just a minute about durability and so far how this boat has been on the water, especially with two people sitting inside. Okay, so believe it or not, I've actually taken this boat out several times with two grown men, myself and either my brother or another friend out in the Kubota. And it's done great, actually no problems at all. That's been uh, not only both with using a paddle, but also with the troll motor. So the troll motor only died one time after about two and a half hours of myself and another guy out. But gosh, we shouldn't have been on the water that day. It was probably 20, 25 mile an hour winds and like 40 degrees. So the wind itself, they, I mean, like we were, we were in white caps on a lake in Oklahoma in the Kubota and we still did okay. We were able to paddle back because our troll motor died about two and a half hours into the trip. So not ideal, but two, two grown men in a Kubota that's 13 feet long, it's an inflatable and fits in the back of my car, that's hard to beat. That's one reason why I bought this Kubota. The second reason is just the portability, the, the storage capacity in terms of lack of what I need to store the boat. I can just put it on the shelf in my garage over there. I can take it in the back of my Camry or my wife's Tahoe out to the lake, blow it up in 10 minutes, throw the wheels on the motor on, and I'm in the water. So from that perspective, it's fantastic. It's rugged. I have not had any problems whatsoever. There's five air chambers throughout the Kubot. So if any one of them goes bad, you can still get to shore and wherever you need to be safely. So yes, it's inflatable, but I feel very secure and safe in it. I've even taken my, two out of three of my kids out in it as well. No problems whatsoever. So I love it. Yes, I can stand in it. It's okay. It's not just the most stable, but what actually works better is if I'm sitting and someone else is in it and they're standing. So that provides a little more stability. So we've definitely done that before. I'll drop a couple of videos uh, either as, as, as kind of like a, a link that you can click on at the end of the video or I'll drop them below of a couple of times that I've been out fishing in this. In fact, one of the very first times I took it out, I caught my PB, which is a 5.4 pound bass. Hope to beat that this year. But anyways, those are quick updates. Hope that helps. Feel free to like this video. Drop a comment below if there's something you'd like me to cover or any questions you might have. All together, Another reason why I bought this Kubota is I believe I have, if you count the troll motor, the wheels, the Kubota, I bet I have maybe $1,300, $1,400 in this. And you're going to be hard to find a 13-foot kayak that fits two people, holds a troll motor, and all the equipment on it uh, for, for $1,300, $1,400. I don't think you're going to find that, uh, and, and maybe you will. I get an inflatable boat, it's not necessary for everyone, but it's been great and it's met my needs, so I highly recommend it. Again, please like, please subscribe to the channel, let me know what else you'd like to see, what else you'd like to know, and as always, thank you for subscribing, you rock, and if nobody's told you today, God loves you, and so do I. Peace out.